Hello everybody, today I've got for you a really cool tutorial. So, I'm going to be showing you how to connect Flight Simulator up to multiple monitors. We're running on 8 monitors, crazy right? So I'm going to be showing you how to configure the monitors, then I'm going to be showing you how to set it up in game and on Windows. So let's get into this tutorial. Obviously the first thing you're going to need is Flight Sim. Now we're running the Steam version, the only difference being with the Steam version compared to the disc one is that it's run on a separate server and you can only get a certain amount of add-ons for it. Secondly, you're going to want your monitors. Now as I said, we're using 8 monitors, but it doesn't matter how many you use. They preferably have to be the same size. We've got 7 24 inch ones and then one 28 inch one for the overhead display. But obviously if you do have monitors that are different sizes, I'd recommend getting the biggest monitor as your main one and then the smaller ones using for controls or anything like that. Also I just want to say, make sure the bezel isn't big on any of the monitors because you don't want a big amount of room between monitors monitors as it's going to wreck your playing experience. Thirdly, you're going to want your graphics cards, you're going to want two or more. We've got two 980 Ti's in our system, that's both graphics cards powering four monitors each, making the total of eight. An optional feature is a joystick, we've got a joystick here and we're using that to play. It's a lot easier to use a joystick but you can still use the keyboard and mouse, it's just an optional preference. So presuming you've got the things we need, let's get straight into the tutorial. Okay, so to install the game, you want to go to Google, go on the Steam website, and then in the search bar, just type in Flight. It will come up as probably the second or the first suggestion. Once that's done, just download Steam, install the game, and you are ready to go. So, now that you've set your monitors up, it's time to plug them into the graphics cards. One thing to note, depending on the monitor, you're going to have different inputs in the monitors. So, usually with standard monitors you get VGA and DVI inputs. With 24 inch monitors, you usually get a HDMI one as well. Most graphics cards usually have one DVI slot, one HDMI input and then one display port. Obviously you're going to have to take into consideration what your monitor uses and you may then need to buy some adapters for that. This is a DVI to display port adapter. Basically this transfers the DVI into the display port so you can plug it into the display port on your graphics card. So I'm just going to go ahead and plug all of my cables into here and then we'll get ready to go. Okay, so now that they're all plugged in, I'm going to be showing you how to configure them all in Windows. So, setting up your monitors. Once they've all been plugged into the graphics cards, it's time to set up the monitors in Windows. So to do this, what we want to do is right click on the desktop, click on display settings. All your monitors will show up here. They may not be in order straight away, most of the time they won't be. So in order to put them in order, you just want to click on identify and then it will show numbers on your monitors like so. So I've got 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 here. That obviously shows that there are the numbers of the monitors and then you'll know when you need to put them in order. So when you put them in order like so, I've already done this. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 being the top monitor and then 6, 7 and 8. So what this allows me to do is drag the monitors like so all the way around so they flow endlessly throughout all of the monitors and they, they don't act like they're not in order. So if you do have some monitors that aren't in order, what you need to do is you need to click on the monitor that's out of order and then move it to where it should be on the timeline. So if I move this back, it will then obviously show that now my monitors are in order and then you just want to click apply and then your monitors will be fine. You'll be able to move all of your screens onto each of the monitors and to the above one and then this then makes it easier because now you'll be able to configure Flight Simulator. So let's get into the game. So now that your monitors are set up and they're plugged into the graphics cards, we now want to configure the game so it can run on all of our monitors. So obviously first things first, we need to open Microsoft Flight Sim. In order to do this, just click on the icon and wait for the launcher to show up. Once the launcher is open, just go to settings and then click on customize and double check your resolution is the same resolution as your monitor. Also, if you're on Windows 10, click on preview DirectX 10 as it will run better on your operating system. 
One thing to mention is that if you've got some lower end graphics cards compared to ours, all you need to do is just turn the graphics down and you'll have a good playable experience. If you're only running it on one or two monitors though, it won't really make a difference and you'll be fine to keep the graphics up. But if you're going for more extreme monitors like ours, turn the graphics down and you'll be fine. So once you've done that, click on free flight. I'm going to be using the Airbus for this flight and I'm just going to change my station to Manchester and then we are going to click OK and then we're going to click fly now. So what you want to do first of all is click P as it pauses the game. Then we're going to go to views, new view, cockpit and then virtual cockpit. I'm going to do this four times as I've got four monitors either side of my main monitor. Then I'm also going to go to new view, aircraft and then do right side window and left side window. This will then give me a view of the side of the plane. Then what you want to do after you've chosen all your views is go to right click on the views and click on undock windows. This will basically make it so that you can drag it to your other monitors. And that's obviously what we want to do is we want to get the surrounding look for the game. So now that you've done that, drag them onto your other monitors. So what you might get is you might get a problem where some of your monitors, like the one behind me, turns black. This basically freezes your monitor and makes it so you can't play the game on it. Now we need to fix this, so the way we fix this is if you go back to your desktop and you right click on the desktop, click on display settings, you just basically want to make sure that you disable the monitors that went black. So I'm just going to head back into the game and see which ones went black. So I know it's six, seven, eight, and five. So just disable these, and then you'll need to enable them again afterwards. Click apply. Okay, so now that that's done, all your monitors will be fine, and then you can then go to back to flight sim. All of your monitors will then be working. This is great because now we can carry on with the tutorial. So what you want to do is you want to click on every screen and then click minus on the keyboard just to basically make it so that you can see more in the views of your windows. So on the screens what I want you to do is click shift, control and hold down enter. Basically what this will do is it will make it so you can move the actual cockpit around more to a central view as if you were sat in the cockpit and then you just want to make that the same on every other screen. Now we want to make it look like an actual cockpit. So in order to do this, what we need to do is we need to hold down space bar on the windows that aren't our main monitor and then drag the mouse so it moves the cockpit around and you basically just want to make it online with the other monitor. Obviously like it would look in a normal cockpit in a plane. Okay, so now we've got it looking like that. It's now time to set up the overhead display. To do this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on views, instrument panel, overhead panel, and then I'm gonna undock that, and then I'm gonna put it on my top monitor because that is what it looked like in real life. Then I'm going to also go to instrument panel, click on the GPS, and I'm gonna put that up there as well. And then for the last one, I'm just going to go to view, cockpit and then the center console and then you are finished you can click p and then you can play the game so guys i hope you've enjoyed this video if you need any questions answering just comment them in the comment section if you've liked, please give me a like and a comment. And if you're new here, please subscribe. I've been Matt. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Oh my God, I'm going to crash. GG, well played.